Africa, seven million years ago, was a very different place. We had just diverged from our last common ancestor with the chimp, who happens to be our closest living relative. Humans exploded and diversified onto the world stage. We may have different colored skin and different adaptations, but we are all the same species. Our evolutionary predecessors may have disappeared. However, we stood and took up their legacy. We are very industrious creatures. As far as we know, the knowledge and customs we pass on from one generation to the next is unsurpassed. But this was not the case when our ancestors first came into the world. We are not evolved from chimps or apes. Our ancestors embarked on their distinct evolutionary path, splitting off from the ancestors of chimps roughly 7 million years ago. We think we know this day because of a common trait that we share with all those classified after the split that chimpanzees do not possess. Bipedalism is the act of solely walking on the legs without the assistance of the arms. Many primates do possess forms of bipedalism, including sitting and walking. However, the rest of the great apes move their best when using their knuckles. Permanent bipedalism also freed our hands for constant, precise of use. This is not to say that the human lineage has always possessed the abilities that we currently have, but we begin to see the development. Our feet make us unique. Human feet and other adaptations allow us to run far longer than any other animal. And yet, even though the feet are the key to bipedalism, for the first few million years, we don't have enough fossil evidence of them. These adaptations made our ancestors more mobile and able to travel longer distances to secure the resources they needed. The human lineage left awake so impressive that there are so many candidates, which makes it near impossible to determine without DNA analysis which one are our ancestors. But the important thing to remember is that while they might not all be our ancestors, it does give us a window into our line of evolution. We also know that species which are close together tend to intermix, and so even though two or more species lived at the same time, it does not disqualify any of them from being our ancestors. Sahel Anthropus Chadensis is largely a mystery, but we do see features that descend from our last common ancestor. We also see more human-like features, with the face being less protruding and the canine shrinking in size. We also believe it to be bipedal because of an analysis of the skull. The spinal cavity appears to resemble more bipedal animals than quadruped animals. The next in our lineage we will concern ourselves with is Ardipithecus ramidus. We believe that this species stood upright and spent half of its time on the forest floor and the other half in the trees. Fossils reveal that we begin to see real changes in the makeup of the foot. The side became stiffer for kicking off the ground, but it did not interfere with the climbing ability. The midfoot was also flattened which reduced its flexibility. They began to branch out to a more varied diet, supplementing the soft fruit and leaves with nuts. From here, we can chart a gradual evolution of size with Ramidus reaching 120 centimeters tall and weighing 50 kilograms. We enter a new era with Australopithecus appearing around 4 million years ago. There were many species of Australopithecus and as we go along their lineage, their molars grew in size while their canine shrank. All were bipedal and they ventured into more open environments but they did not yet give up their lives in the trees. Additionally, they were probably not able to run or jump when on two legs, but their feet did adapt to stabilize their ankles. The most important to us is Australopithecus africanus. Though they still had slightly longer arms and legs, the spine increased lumbar support in females to better carry the added weight of pregnancy when upright. 
The brain is expanding to a point where we can chart a gradual evolution. The brain size of Australopithecus went from 370 centimeters cubed to 450 centimeters cubed. It is here where we begin to see one of the most defining features of humankind. They created stone flake tools in order to access bone marrow and scavenge meat from dead animals. The dawn of our genus starts with Homo habilis appearing around 2.5 million years ago. They were more frequent on the ground and probably spent a large amount of time in the savanna. Their feet were almost modern and their brain size was around 640 centimeters cubed, which is the largest of all those we have covered though still around half the size of our own. They constructed magnificent stone tools and passed this information down from one generation to the next. This was possible because of the way females increased their survival of childbirth. As brains got larger, infants had to be born earlier so they could safely fit through the birth canal. The earlier birth allowed infants to be more malleable in their development, allowing for substantial education. By around 2 million years ago, the climate began to change. We were entering another ice age, and Homo habilis was ill-equipped to handle it. The forest shrank, the savanna became harsher, habilis was led to the brink of extinction. There are many other species who came along the way and may have hybridized to produce our closest ancestors, but the story of the precursors ends with habilis. It is here where they began to pass down their ways, not solely by DNA, but by educating their youth. Perseverance, crossbreeding, and evolution transformed Habilis into the species who put us on to the path to greatness. They passed the ancestral torch to the true foundation of the human story, Homo erectus. Our ancestors were no longer the simple creatures they were at the beginning of the lineage, they became increasingly complex, innovative, light on their feet. They began to construct stone tools to make up for their shortcomings. And yet, they are still just a preview of the titanic epic which is to come. This is Ancestoria, the history of our ancestors. <laughs>